Now let me explain you the business need of a model. Why will you need a model? For this, I'll introduce you to a scenario and then I'll explain you that how the model would have helped. So if you think of, you know, suppose you know there were 100,000 prospects and you send mailer to all of them and only 1,000 took up the product. So if you think of out of 100,000, 1,000 conversion means 1% is the response rate. And if you, you know, if your cost of acquisition, you know, like say if, if your cost of acquisition was $2 per mailer, then you have spent $200,000. And how much, how many people, how many product got sold? Only 1,000. So for each product, you have spent $200 for just mailer, correct? Because 200,000 divided by 1,000 will give you just $200 per product. So that's a very high cost. And if say the business is quite unhappy, your leadership is quite unhappy with such a poor response rate and they call an analyst and they say that, you know, like this is a very high cost. Can you find a base whereby working on less number of prospect, not so much, we can still get almost all the responder. What you need to understand the scenario that I'm talking, it's similar to this where you are working on say 20,000 prospect which is just 20% of the total and probably you can get all 900 responder. There is a reason why I am introducing 900 and 20,000. When I am saying 20,000 you are working on part of the population and when you are I am saying 900 you are getting almost all the responder only 100 is left out. I mean if you think of in 100,000 you are getting 100,000 you are getting 1,000 responder here working on only 20,000 you are getting 900 responder so if you select such a prospect which has a high chance and you select only this kind of population in the whole you know go for the different different cities and select this kind of prospect you will end up having 900 from each so essentially 900 into 5 so by sending mailers to again 100,000 selected prospect you will be getting 900 into 5, 4,500 responders, which is far more than this. And the cost will also be far lesser than 200, right? It will be 200 divided by 4 at 4.5. So the advantage is that, that, you know, you worked on part of the population, but you get all, got almost all the responder. When you're dealing with someone like, you know, who is probably trying to understand the analytical approach first time, he may say that, you know, why can't you work on only 1000 guys and give me all, all on 1000 who will take up the product. But trust me, this kind of scenario does not exist. I mean, all said and done, the model building is based on propensity. It is telling you that these group of guys have a high chance of responding. They have high, very high chance of taking the product in comparison of the base. No way we can find only 1000 guys who will take it. I mean, if you think of even if there are several guys who has the same possibility of, you know, same propensity of taking the product, maybe one or two of them didn't have the time to go for to get the product. So the scenario where you where someone is saying you give me the all ex exactly 1000 guys who have take up the product, I will send mailer to only those guys, it does not exist. What the analytical approach can do it can do that, you know, like, and even this, like, you know, you work on 20,000, you'll get all 1,000 respondents. That's also, it's almost impossible. You'll get almost all of them, like, you know, probably you can get up to 950, but there will be some guys who will always be even in those less propensity group, because what you need to understand, what you are talking, that these group have a lesser probability of response. So, there's a lesser probability, but at even there, some guys will respond. Even in this scenario, in 20,000, you are getting 900. So if you think of just this prospect, in the remaining 80,000, you have 100 responder. The response rate has gone down even far lesser than what you are getting here because you took the cream, those who were the responders, one side. And another side, you took those who were non-responders. But again, there, there are some responders among even the less 
propensity group. So it's a very rare possibility for getting all the responder by working on part of the population. What is that you are trying to do? That you are trying to do that I'll work on a part of the population, a small portion of the population like 20,000 and I will get almost all the responder out of 1000 if you can take 900, 950 this is what you are trying to achieve no way you are trying to get all 1000 and no way you are working you can get on work on only 1000 to get all 1000 so these are the these two highlighted green are the highlight that you will work on a small part of the population and you will get almost all the responder now let me show you same thing graphically so the target that you are trying to achieve that I'll get almost all the responder by working on part of the population so if you start with this kind of population let's say you have n population size is n and responder are k what you are trying to do is that you are trying to create a group in such a way so that you know you work on x percent of the population let's say 20 percent of the population and you get y percent of the responder y percent of all the people who are taking the product here one thing you will definitely like that y should be greater than x so essentially if you are working on let's say 10 percent of the population you should get more than 10 percent of the product i mean if you think in this scenario that we are talking you are working on 20 percent of the prospect out of 100,000, 20,000, so 20 percent of the prospect and how much responder you are getting? You are getting out of 1000 if you are getting 90,000, 900, one, so you are working on 90% of the responder. So if you, in this anatomy you worked on 20% of the population you got 90% of the responder. That's what is the scenario and obviously if you are doing this way in the another scenario you will have 1 minus x percent of the population going into another bucket because at the end of the day you are splitting this right you are splitting into two group one like 20,000 group with 900 responder another with 80,000 prospect and 100 responder so 1 minus x percent here like if 20 percent you are taking it's 80 percent and here if 90 percent of the responder is coming it's 10 percent will come here that what that's what will come here now if you see I have done a color coding here why because if this is the green base and if you show this thing in continuity of rgv you know like if g is the base you know the more responder is usually shown as red and the lesser responder is usually shown as blue by color itself at times you will be able to figure out okay this is the group where it is more responder this is the group where you have less responder this is like what is being followed in some software packages but anyway like you know you will be able to see this kind of thing there are many examples of this kind of thing that you will be able to see so if green is the benchmark more response rate you will show in red and less response rate you will show in the blue if the software packages support that otherwise anyway you will try to show it in such a way so that you can see it very well usually you will work on red means like the proportion where you know you work on part of the population you get almost all the responder or you will work on the other side where you will work on the like the other side it will all depend on what you are trying to look for so depending on situation you will select it you will work on red or you will work on blue or you will work on both of them in a different way so this is what is the target this is what you are trying to achieve in decision tree you are trying to bifurcate the population in such a way that one part has a far more response rate response rate than another